Hello everybody, my name is Jérôme Monceau and I am the founder and CEO of uh, Enchanted Tools. So at Enchanted Tools, we are building uh, humanoid robots in a totally uh, new way. We are uh, 130 persons in, uh, in France, Paris, uh, and we are mainly uh, engineers and of course experts in, in humanoid uh, robotics. So just a, a quick story about myself. I started 20 years ago working um, uh, on Now and Paper. I was co-founder of that company. And we sold almost 40,000 uh, units. Uh, so we have made the leader in humanoid uh, robot uh, production, at least. And in 2016, I, create, I decided to, to restart from scratch because I wanted to, to, to uh, create new kind of humanoid robots. And I create a company named Spoon who is designing interactive digital character. So we are, of course, using generative AI, but we put on top of that characters. Like here, what you see, it's uh, uh, the Renault, you know, the car manufacturer. Uh, so it's a character that is directly inside the car, in the cockpit. So then you can talk to the car, you can talk to that character and get help about this, uh, the, the vehicles. So it uh, happened to be launched uh, in, in France, the R4 and R5 uh, electric car. We sold more than uh, 1 million uh, uh, units uh, uh, to Renault. And in 2021, uh, I understood that AI was about to, to, to change a lot, and I saw that many companies were, were back on, uh, on hardware, and more specifically, bipedal humanoid robots. So I decided to, uh, to, 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 to launch uh, a new company, and I raised 15, mi 15 mi million euros to, to uh, set up. Uh, that company, and in 12 months, we developed that prototype. You will see some, some video. And we have two characters, Miroquin and Miroki, uh, that are here to, uh, to help people. And during this 20 years, I learned things about humanoid robots. First of all, they are on the field. They are working with people. And people should not be scared by robots because they are, they, this is their every day, you know? You cannot work with something that scares you. And um, at the same time, these humanoid robots are interacting with real life people. I mean, uh, nurses, uh, caregivers, uh, seller staff, uh, and they are untrained users. They are not experts about how to use a humanoid robot. So the interface should be very, very uh, simple. And we are uh, living in a place, we are working in a place, and we need an happy place. We need enthusiasm. We need to be happy to do our work. And having a robot, which is a humanoid, which is a character, needs to come with enthusiasm and, and happiness on, on the daily life. That's something that is very important for me and for a humanoid uh, robot. This is what I believe. And this time, something big is happening. Of course, now we have generative AI. And believe me, it changed everything in the way we are designing humanoid robots. Before, we got everything needed to, to be codes in order for the robot to perform an action. We should write everything. But now, we have a powerful tools that allows the robot to synthesize its behavior depending on the current context. And believe me, it changed definitively the way this kind of machine could, could behave. And um, uh, it's also a way for the generative AI not only playing with information and playing with image, but playing with the reality. An AI can now move things, open a door, uh, move a, a plate somewhere, take an object, interact with people, go to see another people. That's something an AI, AI could do with, uh, with robots. So that's why we see more and more robots coming this time, and I believe that that is going to be something really, really big. So here I just want to zoom uh, on the healthcare market, and more specifically, uh, the, the, uh, the hospital situations. I'm sure you know uh, that we got some trouble uh, this time about hospital. There is more and more work, less and less people, and the population is getting older, so it's getting worse and worse. In France, in 2030, we will have more elderly people than active people. So we have a problem. And the population getting older, we will have 1.6 billion seniors in the world in 2050. 
So we have a civilization crisis in front of us. And here I put a couple of numbers, like uh, in a small hospital of 200 beds, there is 100,000 object displacement per week, which is one third of the people time there. So we can do something, and, and automatization of places like that is something that could help uh, the people in place to in increase their um, um, efficiency and productivity. Um, and it has been uh, estimated that in 2030, we will have 10 million open positions and no human to fill it. So we definitely need a way to increase the productivity of people who are working there. And this is a situation of uh, what we have in terms of uh, humanoid robots. And now I would like to, to play a small game with you. Imagine that your kid is in an hospital or somewhere, or your parent or grandparent. Which of these robots would you like uh, them to, uh, to care uh, about your kids? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> My uh, personal feeling is that the two on the right are, are the best for that. Um, because, uh, you know, uh, w when we are in such situations, of course, hospital, healthcare, elderly, but also restaurant, hotel, it's not only a question of being served, it's also an experience. It's also uh, meeting something, experiencing something. And, and for me, a robot should be friendly. He should be uh, looking at me, smiling to me, interacting with me, create something that, uh, that is uh, unus uh, unusual. But at the same time, it should be safe. Yeah? There is no situation where a, a robot can fall uh, in front of my kids. Uh, I don't want, I want to be sure that something like that could not happen, which is not true when we are talking about bipedal robots. And as I said, we are not talking about experts who knows how to interact with a humanoid robot. We are talking about untrained users, people like everyday users. So how could they uh, interact with such machines? So that's why it's really important to, 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 to keep um, um, the sense of design and the sense of emotion, emotion in the way we design the humanoid robots. So here are Miroka and Miroki. They are about to cross the portal of the reality. So think about that. Uh, humanoid robots are characters. So this means that they are characters we create. We undone this, this character. And we decide to create a full story about them. They are living a far, far away planet. They can go through a portal. And when they do that, they can enter our reality. This is what AI al uh, allow us to do. We can invent a character and make that character become real in the place where we are. And for me, that story is very important because I'm, um, uh, I want to tell story to, to people who interact with that. It's a, a trust relation that we can build uh, with them, you know? Uh, I do not sell a robot that is sentient, aware about himself. I'm just selling a character that has its story and bring that story to you. And here is a a video that has been shot uh, in, a, in an hospital in, a, in Paris, Hospital Broca, which is a, a, an elderly uh, hospital. And as you can see, we have made strong choice about the robot design. First of all, it's not a bipedal robot. It's mounted on the ball that allows to keep this invert pendulum function. Um, he has a, a friendly uh, face with ears, 20 centimeters ears, so he can see you, he can react to you, he can look to you, your eyes, he can smile back to you, um, and he also has arms that allow the robot to grab object. But we don't want the robot to grab any kind of object because first, it could be dangerous, and sometimes it will fail if we uh, tell people the robot can grasp anything. We want to be sure that the robot can only grasp safe object, um, with um, a, a strong efficiency. Okay, so the good news is that ancient tools, after uh, three years of working on prototype, are now shipping robots. So we uh, deliver our first robot the last two, uh, two months, uh, and, and we just sell a robot to uh, ICM, which is a concert institute in Montpellier. And here, the robot is, um, is here to support kids that will uh, get into the, the radiotherapy uh, rooms. And, and there is no human that can get in that room, and the robot is here as a presence to help that kid uh, and to support him. 
Um, and we are also uh, selling robots to um, uh, nursing homes, elderly houses, uh, but also to, uh, um, uh, to uh, hospitals to, 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 to do what we call uh, um, pa patient guidance, small logistics, like uh, bringing a trolley, a plate, and basket, or, or things like that. Uh, but it's also a lot about waiting room management because we know that there is a big issue here in an hospital or in clinics uh, in order to, to tell the people what they need, to guide them where they should be in order to increase the productivity of the place. And we also have a good, uh, a good market around uh, uh, retail. So here the point is um, we have a generic robot, a, ge a robot that can grasp object and which could be very uh, flexible in the way it could help people. Of course, it could be at the beginning of your experience in the shop, uh, welcoming you, uh, telling you more about the new product or the new message from the, from the brow, brow, uh, brand. It can also um, um, guide you inside the shop, bringing you in the place where you should find the product you are looking for. Uh, and it's also a robot that could um, uh, carry something like a trolley or shelves and in order to reconfigure the shop during the night depending on what is going to happen uh, the, the, the day after. And the, the really good news about uh, generative AI is that the robot can take all the brand marketing message, all the product definition and construct um, a message adapted to the current situation. How old are you? Uh, how many people is in front? What, what was your question? And then uh, trying to present you the product in the best way that could match to your expectation. And that worked really, really well. So it should be seen not as something that replaces human, but it should be seen as a way to empower sellers and uh, nurses and caregivers to give them a tools to extend their productivity. And we have a strong partner, as you can see on the list, and that's just a, a, a short uh, example. So these days, we have more uh, hundreds of robots in our waiting uh, list, which is really good. And we will continue uh, improving our production capabilities. Next year, we will be around uh, 50 robots by month shipped to, uh, to our client. So I want to, to, to be back and to talk again about how much the user experience is important. So of course, it's important to, to grab an object and to be efficient in the way we are performing an action. But interacting with people, and looking at people, dancing with people is something that a humanoid could do. And it could definitively change the way we are um, living in places like nursing home or hospital, retail, event, and, and, and so, so many places like that. And I strongly recommend you to, to, to come to see uh, our robot, and you will see that he's reacting to you, and you could, be feel, you could feel being seen by a machine. And that, that is something really rare. It just does not exist. You, you never have done that experience. But once you will be in front of our robot, you will feel that, and you will see that it's uh, something really uh, magical. So um, we are doing people-facing uh, humanoid robots. It's not a robot that is only into the industry. It's a robot that is everywhere we have people. Uh, gen generative AI is really good to interact with you. And it could be good in a robot, in uh, um, a people-facing application. So healthcare, elderly, retail, airport, hospitality, restaurant, hotel, uh, industry, and event are all the market we are targeting uh, these days, and, and, and it works well, really well. Uh, well sorry, and, and uh, the people-facing market is much bigger than the industry market, as you can imagine. So we have uh, some good news this time. Um, next week, we will be in uh, San Francisco, and I'm going, uh, going to give a talk. And uh, we will have a digital interactive character. I will talk to the character uh, from the screen, and I will ask Miroka to join uh, me on, on stage. That will be uh, amazing to see that character becoming real. So this is what, what we are about to do. And in Paris, we are um, opening our open urban factory. So it's a place where robots are here, available for everybody, um, ready to welcome people and ready to, to give them a, a unique experience in Paris. But uh, I would love to open one here in New York or in San Francisco uh, pretty soon. And we have a new version that is, uh, that is coming that will soon be ready and to, to be shown. 
So thank you a lot for listening to me. I hope you enjoyed this uh, new way of defining what is a humanoid robot, and see you soon.